myself uh, kiran total i have around 6 plus years of experience in data domain currently i am working as a data engineering one of the consulting firm welcome to another video at ksr data vision so we had a lot of queries from the student like which is the best data engineering course they have to go for whether is azure data engineering course or snowflake with aws data engineering so to do, uh, to answer those all questions we have come up with this video there will be mainly understanding what does a typical data engineer do what their uh, day to day activities what they do and we will try to understand i backbone of any cloud data engineering either it may be azure or aws what is the backbone what is the main tools they have to learn to get into data engineering then we will try to understand a typical roadmap for azure data engineering then we will understand a typical roadmap for aws data engineering then we will compare azure with aws data engineering then at the last we'll see salaries and growth of data engineer so coming to uh, what does a data engineer do so consider any data related projects the main aim will be building a machine learning models or coming up with a reports using data analysis so what does let us understand briefly what does data analysis or machine learning do models what are the machine learning models so suppose consider let me give you a small example so you might be having a netflix subscription and you, you like watching action movies so on a day uh, you took a subscription today and you on a day one you were watching action movie on the day two you go and watch again some action movies and on a day three you goes and you watch some more action movies but after a week or so you won't watch any movies and you come back and you see you might see in the home page of your netflix where you are filled with lot of suggestion based on action movies so how they come up with this suggestion so what they do is based on your likes and dislikes there are machine learning models that are built in the back end using the algorithms so they come up with the more and more suggestions for you so that you can hook up on the netflix and you can buy the subscription monthly basis so that they using building these models what it helps is they get a revenue so what they try to do based on the certain actions they try to predict and they come up with a decision so that they can grow their business in the future whereas in data analysis what does the data analysis do so suppose uh, the main aim of data analysis is to uh, see the data from the past analyze the data and come up with the dashboards or reports where they can see the growth of their sales from year to year month to month quarter to quarter the number of products they have sold using the survey feedback so what are their customer retention so to analyze their pre, uh, business and try to improve on top of their past we use the data analysis now again either it may be data analysis or machine learning the main thing is data and the data should be workable data so where does this data come from this data comes from various sources nowadays we have a lot of sources data analysis people directly can't go to the sources and extract the data so suppose take an example you are you are you want to see the sales of past 3 years and that data is in there in the source too and you also go want to relate to the products which products are sold more and that data is there in the source one so the uh, the team from data analysis people cannot go to the source one and get the Uh, data related to products and they can again they, they can't go to the source to and get the related to source data because it's not a feasible thing to do so what we do we come up with one centralized data repository where we extract data from all the sources transform the data into a workable format and then load that data into a uh, data repository then we can easily work on the data and come up with the reports or work on the machine learning model so basically this what does any data related project look like and this etl work are done by the data engineers so you might be on so these the ctl developers are data engineers yes etl developers are also called as data engineers in in early times we used to have a limited number of data like in the gigabytes and the sources were also limited so we used to use on prem systems where like informatica ssis talent and we used to extract the data transform and load but now since data has grown in a terabytes of and it's not feasible to use the on prem system so that's the reason we are using cloud system where we can scale easily and extract the data transform and load in a, da in a data repository and work on our data so what does the cloud data engineer do then the the same etl uh, work doing a cloud is called as a cloud data engineering so i hope you might have understood what does the data engineers do now coming to any cloud data engineer so either it may be aws or azure what's the main skills they need to have they need to have, know sql sql is a bread and butter for any data related domain so they need to be very good up to the intermediate level they need to know basics you know to what are the dl dml commands ddl commands they need to know what constraints what are different constraint primary key foreign key or, or null checks they need to know, understand these they need to understand windows functions order rank dense rank they need to know that joins different types of joins sub queries they need to know about date date functions they need to know about string functions they have to work with the aggregate functions various type of temporary table common table expression and they have to have a knowledge on views and store procedure has as well so once you are good with sql the next main thing we have to concentrate that is on python so in python one we have to be very good up to the core python see for python is a ocean we can't read uh, we can't learn each and everything in the python so whatever required for data engineer we have to concentrate on that so in that we need to concentrate on python basics variables loops 
if if and else conditions different type of data types functions lambda uh, uh, intermediate level of data structures like list tuple set dictionaries how to do error handling and we need to have a knowledge on these two libraries that are pandas and numpy which are mainly used for data analysis so once we know the python then we have to have understanding on data warehouse where in data warehouse concepts we need to know what are fact tables what are dimension tables what are different types of scds what are data lake what are data mart we need to have a little bit understanding on data modeling as well so once we finish our data warehouse then the uh, next thing we have to learn is big data processing so we might be having uh, the terabyte of data where we have to process those big data so you can use make use of spark architecture so before learning spark architecture we have to have a little bit knowledge on hadoop because how hadoop works so once we have an idea on hadoop and spark and hive then we can learn deep dive into pyspark so if you have a good knowledge on sql and pandas pyspark is a bit easy to understand and very quick to learn so once you learn pyspark then you can go with cloud computation and learn what is cloud computation so once you have finished these four main backbones then you are ready to dive either azure data engineering or aws data engineering so let's understand if you want to learn azure data engineering so what are the services we have to learn see again in the both azure and aws there are a lot of services we have to concentrate only a particular services which are required for data engineering so again storage services there is the way we are going to store a data in various format either it may be your images photos it might be csv files it might be zip files it might be json files avro orc files we are mainly use storage services we need to have we need to know what is blob storage we need to understand what is adlf gen 2 we have to we need to have that know that um, understanding of this service so uh, then the next service we need to know is azure data factory azure data factory is mainly used for orchestration where we extract the data from all the sources and try to load the data in the storage services so we need to have the uh, knowledge on keywords what are keywords keywords are nothing but to maintain the secrets i mean maintaining the so uh, any passwords we uh, which we should not be exposed we use keywords we need to ha have a knowledge on that then we need to work on databricks uh, in databricks we work, make use of pyspark sql and python mainly to do a big data processing so uh, we we have to be very good at azure data engineering and again to know at azure data bricks so azure data bricks is a competitor to snowflake and but it has a lot more features compared to snowflake so uh, once we learn azure data break then i we have to learn another services called as azure synapse analytics See, azure synapse analytics is a combination of azure data factory and azure data bricks where we will be right uh, in azure data bricks we'll be writing our python code in the notebooks that functionality has been added into azure synapse analytics where we no need to use a uh, data bricks so directly we can use that notebook features in the synapse analytics so we if we know data factory and data bricks it's very easy to learn so once we know azure synapse analytics we have to you know work on logic apps which are mainly used for email notification and pipeline triggering activities so we need to know about that then since if you want to work on any real time streaming data then we have to have a knowledge on azure synapse analytics how it works then if you want to work with any unstructural data then we have to work know about azure cosmos db where we'll be mainly storing unstructured data so and then we have to know have a little bit of idea on microsoft infra id where we'll be maintaining all the services using the microsoft of infra id this is a typical azure data engineering roadmap at least we have to know these services to be a good data engineering in azure now coming to aws data engineering so i would like to say we have seen in the market where if anyone who are good with snowflake dbt and aws they have a lot of job opportunities so what i say i suggest is first understand snowflake so snowflake is nothing but is a cloud data warehouse so which, which is a serverless and it is a SaaS software as a service so we don't need to wo worry about the maintenance of the clusters we don't need to worry, uh, worry about the licensing part we can just work directly in the snowflake and it's a cloud-based data warehouse so it's very easy to understand it has a lot of features it has uh, features like time travel it has, uh, data cloning it has a lot of functionality it connects with a lot of other tools as well it connects with informatica iics it connects with azure it connects with gcp it connects with aws metalian so all the etl tools it connects easily so that's the reason that's been more demand in the market now so i i would suggest first deep dive into snowflakes once you understand snowflake then go more on to the azure service where again amazon s3 is nothing but it's a storage service where we store all different types of data uh, and access those data through aws service now again once we know about a little bit of es3 we can learn about aws glue aws glue is nothing but it is used to build etl jobs so mainly to process a large scale of data we use aws glue and it's a serverless and we don't need to worry back about the clusters or servers backend so once we learn about uh, glue then we we can learn amazon emr that is elastic map reduce 
EMR is mainly used to process a data in the distributed form that is uh, that is similar to Hadoop or Spark, where we process a large amount of data in a small chunks and then combine those process data and extract the data for the further uses. El Elastic map reduce is mainly for big data processing. So once we have a basic understanding on that, then we can move on to the kinesis. The kinesis is mainly used for real time data extraction. That is a streaming data for mainly streaming data. We use the kinesis. And next we have to learn about uh, AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is mainly a event based computing service, which are mainly used to trigger the jobs. Then we have to have an understanding of Redshift. See Redshift is again a data warehouse where it is used to uh, store the data and analysis the data but is mainly supported by AWS. It is not uh, similar to Snowflake where it has a lot of connectors to the different services, whereas uh, Amazon Redshift is mainly particularly with respect to AWS. Then again, uh, we have to know about Amazon DynamoDB where we mainly store the unstructured data. Now, DBT. DBT does not come with a AWS services. It's a data build tool. It's a, it's a particular type of tool, which is mainly used for ETL activities and the one who is having a knowledge on Snowflake D with AWS and DBT are having a lot of demand in the market. So uh, we need to have a knowledge on DBT as well. Now you might have learned about the roadmap of both Azure Data Engineering and AWS Data Engineering. Now let us compare both Azure Data Engineering and AWS Data Engineering. So you might be seeing. So just I want to say, if you learn one any cloud services, it is very easy to learn on the cloud services. You might be seeing the difference uh, similarities here. So you can you might be seeing data services where again data factories similar to that of Glue. So uh, again, Redshift or is similar to that of Snowflake or Synapse Analytics is similar to that of Snowflake. You might be seeing Glue, again, Data Factory, mainly for processing. We might be seeing any uh, any data bricks we can uh, data bricks is again you can work with AWS so we can, you, you might be seeing this there is not much difference so uh, if you learn one tool in a, uh, any one cloud data tool either it may be Azure or AWS it is very very easy to learn other two but compare when we compare to the market shares we see that AWS is having a more like dominance in the market compared to that of Azure. It is nearly to 50% now and Azure is having around 35%, but Azure is catching up with the AWS from past four years. It's been like growing like anything. And maybe in coming years, you might see it may overtake the AWS also. And coming to demand and supply in, for jobs and candidates in the market. If you see that there are hundreds of jobs in AWS, we can find more than 1,500 candidates. Why this is happened? Because a lot of people have learned AWS, they understand AWS and we have a lot of candidates. Whereas in Azure, there are the demand is more, but supply is very less. The very good candidates, we are, it's very difficult to find a very good candidates in the market. So you might see that for every thousand jobs, we are having less than thousand candidates. So you might be understanding seeing that uh, difference between AWS data engineering or Azure data engineering is not much difference. So you have to learn one tool very nicely, then we can easily learn another tool. There's not much difficulty in that. Now coming to salary, it's a, again depends upon the number of years or number of years of experience and your current CTC. But I would like to say, if you know any data engineers uh, compared to other other people in the market, like other software engineers, uh, you might say like number of years of experience into four in four or five times of the number of years of experience. For example, you are having four years of experience. You can expect up to 20 LPA. Either it may be AD, AWS with uh, Snowflake and DBT or ADF with the Databricks and Azure services. You can expect up to 20 to 30 LPA. And even again, it depends upon your current CTC. But I'd like to say that if you have at this moment, you might be uh, having a knowledge in one cloud. And if you are having a knowledge in multiple cloud, that is, you're having a knowledge in both Azure and AWS as well, we can expect up to even 30 LPA uh, based on your number of experience. Again, in coming years, like say 2025 or 2026, if you don't have one any cloud no, uh, computation in your resume, then you will be not fit to be a candidate to any companies because nowadays everything is moving into cloud. And I would suggest get into one technologies, either it may be Azure or AWS. If you are working with AWS, and if you are, if you want to upskill in yourself in AWS, then you can just learn Snowflake and DBT, and you can move into the cloud data, AWS data engineer. Or if you are ha working with any of the other Microsoft related services, then I would like to suggest you to go to the Azure data engineer and learn. So again, if you're very new, you're not, uh, you don't know any knowledge on AWS or Azure, then I would like to suggest you better to get started with Azure since there is a lot less uh, competition in the market and it is very user friendly to learn. And once 
you can easily learn the tools and once you are good for the market you can go and crack the interviews we have uh, azure data engineering as well as the snowflake along with aws data engineering batches running in your in our ksr data vision so we are more than happy to help you thank you and if you have any other doubts do let us know in our com comment section we'll try to make a video on, on that thank you